going on everybody? Welcome to my unboxing video for my Sony Handycam HDR CX190. Now, this is um, the first camera I've ever bought. I'm using a camera obviously right now to record this, but it's um, it's a very basic, not, not too dated, it's not a bad camera at all. I mean, I've used it a couple times for a few things. It's a Panasonic, an SD camera. It's nothing particularly special, but it's, it's not bad. It gets the job done, but you know, just like I kind of said, it's sort of dated, so I was looking for, it's actually kind of a story that maybe I should save for story time when we're around campfires, but I was looking for a camera and I actually was kind of settled on a certain one. I went to go pick it up, I got it, it was like, the camera was pretty good, but there was like half the stuff missing in the box, including the charger for the battery that the camera runs off of, so the camera would be useless without that, and I had such trouble at Radio Shack returning it, getting it back. It, uh, hands down, I'm never shopping at Radio Shack again. I found their customer service and um, overall everything that went down there kind of uh, less than I would consider even acceptable. So that's going to be a story. I, I might I might rant about that some other time, but it was a Vivitar. It was a pretty nice camera. It was the one I was looking at. This was like the second one, and I, I tried everywhere to find that Vivitar anywhere else, and no one else was selling it. So that's just... That's bad marketing on their part. It's too bad because it looked pretty good. But this came in the mail a little while ago, and I thought I'd just do an unboxing for it. So I, I will probably, well, all these unboxings I've been having, I keep saying I'll do reviews with them, and I will be doing more official reviews where I actually know full on what I'm talking about. But um, I did a little bit of research on this camera, and it seemed like just about the thing I wanted. I got it for uh, $250. My limit for buying my first camera was going to be $300. I wanted, I only had a few requirements. I wanted the camera shooting at least 720p, but everything seems to shoot at least 1080p now, so that's, I mean, that's obviously better, but what can you, I mean, that was just my minimum requirement. I wanted it to have a USB, uh, save in a format that I could recognize easily with my editing system, decent audio quality, and uh, work with an SD card, which is, which is funny, because the camera I'm using now works with an SD card, but it doesn't, uh, it won't recognize it. I'm not sure why not. But uh, if you can take a look there, the box, like I said, $250, I thought it was uh, pretty good. And the best part about this whole thing now is I also bought a tripod earlier. So that's, uh, that's uh, really, really nice. If you're going to start doing anything with cameras, honestly, I'd, I'd recommend finding at least a cheap little tripod somewhere because it'll save you so much hassle. So there's the box. I think this comes with a recommended See. Uh, that was the problem with the other camera. I bought it and it didn't have half the stuff that should have been in the box. And they they told me they couldn't even give me like the HDMI cable that was included with it. And it was... Uh, I, I probably will end up making a separate video about talking about that, even though it's been a little while now. But this this pretty much did everything minimum I wanted it to. Um, I wish it came with a carrying case. That would have been nice. But I think everything else about it is so solid I really couldn't care less. I mean, unfortunately, it seems like it's kind of a a, uh, a little bit of a pricey hobby to get into, but... I, I want to get into it as a hobby and as possibly a profession, so. And there it is. Ooh. Shiny. And I was surprised I actually did take this out of the box before. This isn't actually the very first quote unquote unboxing. But, um. This was. This is a pretty small camera, in my opinion. I mean, it's not like I'm saying. There, there's pros and cons with small. If you're, if you're going to be a big person on traveling or something, this might be a really good camera for you. Um. It's. Hmm. It's pretty light too, like this is a light camera. The last camera I had was a Vivitar 990. Um, and, well this is a Sony, which I think is just a more trusted name. I don't think Vivitar is quite as a highly regarded camera, but this is, this is light. It's nice. Um, at the end of the video I'll probably be, uh, after I charge up the battery for this, I'll do a uh, little look on the screen and do a quality test for it, but wow, this is nice. I think, yeah, this has actually, it's really cool that I thought was kind of cool was a built-in USB, so it's you can never lose the USB cable. It's built right in, and it's not too inconvenient because it just slides right into this. Done. Nice. I like the screen, too. The screen is... Uh, the, the other camera is bigger, and I kind of like the screen more for that, but at the same time, it's kind of like it was a little bit more annoying to... Uh, if, you need, if you're traveling, I can already tell this is already kind of a, like a traveler's camera, so it looks pretty good. If it really does stay up with the uh, 5.3 megapixels... Um, it's got a 30 times zoom, which zoom, which I don't think I'm gonna really need exactly, but that's you know why not? And of course it shoots in 1080p, and 1080p seems to get thrown around, uh, thrown around, thrown around a lot. Uh, 
I know that's gonna come off of there smoothly, right? Okay. I hate it when anyone puts something on a camera and it like, you know, or anything, a product, and you rip the sticker off and it like leaves a little trail there. That's, that's the worst thing. It's like, well, did you really need to put it right there? So it's kind of ironic that I'm using a standard camera shoot uh, uh, video for an unboxing of a high definition camera, but this will probably be my last standard definition boxing uh, video, a video of any kind, actually. I do like how they have the uh, lens here. Open and close, that's nice. I mean, it's another thing, it's just like the built-in here. This is obviously made for travel, which I'm not gonna be doing too much of, but you know. And, cause it's got the built-in shutter, not shutter, but um, lens cover. It's got the built-in USB. This is obviously built for travel. Plus it's light, it's compact, it's nice. You have an HDMI out, and I think that's a, yeah, it's a, now Firewire? It looks like a Firewire to me, or the other end of a USB. And I think there is a Firewire if it's not over there. Yeah, they got the SD card in, uh, AV, and direct current, I think. Yeah, I guess you can plug this in. I don't know if I have taken a look at everything else here. I think this is a uh, USB extender for the, because I mean, look at this, right? This is, um, you can just plug that right in so you'd never have to worry about that. Extend the USB. I'm not sure if that'll actually plug into a USB drive right there. Uh, it seems like it would, yeah. So just in case you, you know, can't reach it to your computer's USB drive. Uh, most of them come with them right in the front now though. Yep, then you've got the uh, uh, DC current in. Nice little battery. I think it said it had something to, a couple of hours of battery life, or I think I heard like maybe four hours of battery life. That's way more than I'd ever really need, but who knows, maybe if I start doing traveling and stuff, then I would, battery life would be very important. And here's some of that kind of gets me. I understand it's more of a, I mean, you get more money for your total bang buck. Uh, the company's getting more money out of you is what I'm trying to say. But it's, it's funny when they promote a high definition 1080p mega camera and they give you standard definition cables. But, I mean, yes, it's nice that I have them, but I have three more of these from other things. I mean, these are, they just throw out at people, but they never give you any um, composite cables. So, I, I don't know, I think it's kind of funny myself. Or uh, component cables, excuse me. And uh, no HDMI cable, none of that, but that's okay, because I'm just, hopefully it'll just be as simple as drag and drop with my USB. So, yeah, I kind of like this already. And it doesn't seem to me, I mean, I haven't obviously turned it on yet, I can't really say anything, but it doesn't seem to me like it would be too powerful, but I guess we're about to find out. I'm going to go ahead and charge the battery, and uh, we're going to look at the screen, and I'm going to do a quality test, and I'm going to put that up and see how good that is. So I'll see you guys in just one second. All right, so I've got the camera plugged right into the wall, and I'm honestly not sure quite how good you'll be able to see this, but we'll just take a look at the menu. It seems like it's pretty good quality right off the bat, because... Sometimes my problem with these things are they, they'll claim it's 1080p or something higher, even, you know, right around there because that's the thing nowadays. And truthfully, it won't be true 1080p. And I, I mean, I'll, all I wanted was 720p because that's plenty good enough quality for me. If you look at the jump between like 480p and 720p, it's a huge jump. The jump between 720p and 1080p is noticeable, but it's not as drastic of a jump. Uh, let's see, camera and mic. Well, that's good because the last camera I looked at, the Vivitar, I, the picture quality was great on it. It was great, but it seemed like they had completely forgotten to add in a mic and threw it in at the very last second, threw in the crappiest mic they could find. And it was just bad, and that was one of the reasons I didn't even want to keep that camera. I just wanted good picture quality and decent audio quality. And it had good picture quality, but it had a bad uh, mic quality. And this, what I, uh, the other one was touchscreen too. I didn't know how I felt about that. I don't really, I'm not much of a touchscreen guy myself. For certain things, it's nice, but I'm not sure if I would always want that. And and the more settings, really, the better. I mean, it, the other that was the other problem with the Vivitar I had. I should have done a review on that while I had it, but I've got this one now, and I can already tell you compared to that. And maybe other cameras out there, it's like the more the more choices there are, the more options there are, the better. Just like why not? Even if it's something I'll never use, it's kind of nice that it's there, or if I only use very rarely. And I believe this camera was also, uh, it, it's it's promoted as like a travel camera, but I think it's also uh, promoted for a few other things. Movie, photo, it can do photos too, of course. I don't think there are too many video cameras that don't do photos anymore. Obviously not as good as like a real photo camera. Edit and copy, huh? That's interesting. Image quality. So it actually has quite a few settings, and I really like that. Basic setup. 
and mic level normal. See, that's just one thing the other one didn't have, and it just I couldn't understand how they had such a quiet, quiet mic, and there was no way to boost it at all. There was no audio option. There were only like a few options of that camera too. So, and this is supposed to be good in low light and dark, which is good because I'm not the best lighting. I do a decent job, but not too good. White balance, exposure, focus. Nice fader. All I needed was a basic camera to kind of get started and to kind of ease my way into the world of cameras. No one, you should never start out with like, go out and buy a $500 camera right away. That's, no, I mean, just just taking my, uh, my capture card, for example, what I've been using, because I'm not as familiar with actual video cameras, I'm more familiar with capture cards and direct capture because I do so much gameplay footage and that's what you, the kind of like official thing that people use. And um, I started out with a Dazzle, like very many people did. I think people starting out with uh, HD capture cards right away is a little, a little bit too much of a jump when maybe you don't know what you're doing right away or you don't, you're not even sure if you really want to be into it. So, so I like this so far. This is really nice. I'm going to take it out. I think I'm going to shoot a couple places, mess with the quality, mess with the uh, mic, and do a couple checks, and I'll bring it back to the end of the video and close out my thoughts. So I'll see you guys in just a second. Okay, so I actually have the camera all charged up now. Um, one thing I'm not too thrilled about is that you actually need to have the uh, camera as the charger. You connect the charger to the camera and the battery in the charger. Not like a lot of them where you just have the uh, charger and you put the battery right into the charger and plug it into the wall. So that's not really a big deal, but kind of like eh. And I also did a test to check that uh, the file type that this camera saves as is compatible with my editing system, and it is, so that's really nice. And using my tripod here, nice steady shot. The autofocus is pretty good. The the 30 times zoom is amazing. I don't think I'd ever need to really zoom that far. At a certain point, it just kind of gets ridiculous. But uh, I, I do like it. I like the quality. It's very clear. And the autofocus is great. Professionals don't use the autofocus, but I think the autofocus is pretty good. Or at least it's gotten better since earlier cameras, where it wasn't so great. And one of the things I'm going to learn after I put this in, I'm all done with it, is how good the audio quality is. But everything here seems... Uh, Seems pretty good. Yes, Toby, greatest villain of all time. And Halo 2, greatest game of all time. And Majora's Mask, how good of a zoom that is. That's a pretty good zoom. Okay, and now I'm going to take it off the tripod. It's got a lot of features that I'll be going over and review. Like I said, I will be making a review of this camera. It'll take some time, it won't happen overnight. But, uh, yeah. It actually focuses pretty good outside, too. Like the transition between outside to inside. I really like it. The zoom on it is easy to use. It's a very light camera. You can be gentle, you can be fast with it. And there, oh, there's a specific setting for night that I've looked at and it looks pretty good. And uh, that will all be in my eventual review. So uh, yeah, I think this is gonna end off this video here. And um, I hope to make a lot of reviews and uh, product reviews and uh, vlogs and all that kind of stuff with this, so should be a lot of fun. So uh, until then, I thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you later.